Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our program. Folks, today I'm going to show you even more complicated stuff than the last time, as I've already alluded to. Today I'm going to actually show you how to build an extremely basic GTK GUI. Let's get right on into it. So, folks, to actually get everything installed so we can use this, you can go to this link I'm going to give you in the comments and the description. You're going to find your Linux distribution of choice. In my case, I'm on Red Hat, so I believe this will work. Sometimes this stuff's pre-installed. I think in my case, because it's Rocky specifically, it's going to be GTK3 uh, that I would put there, but the rest I think is the same. But regardless, you will find your packages for this. So most of you is probably on Debian and Ubuntu-based stuff. That's really easy. I can tell you right now that this will do your install of everything and you can on the modern systems. And so we can come in here and just get everything set up and it will make our life really easy because we need to have everything installed. All right, so we have got our GUI here. Full disclosure, today you're not going to be able to run it in the built-in terminal. So we're going to go ahead and open up our regular terminal here. You're going to want to use the change directory command to get into your folder. Right? We're going to go in here to our folder. I'm going to make this even bigger. Hopefully you all can see that good. And again, if we run our GUI the way it is, using Python 3 space R file, we're going to go ahead and get our program right here. So this right here is our GUI that I actually showed you a very quick tease of. But now we're going to actually talk about how to actually do some stuff with it. So what we're going to do, we're going to change our button here so that our button is actually separate and it is created as a variable. So I'm going to call it btn. Remember from our previous video, we used our equal sign like this to go ahead and set our variable. We're going to use our uh, function here, gtk.function, to create a button. So we've created our button. And now what we're going to do is we're going to just add btn right there. But we also need to do another call. So on button, we're going to do connect dot connect on it. And what we're going to do is we need to tell it what event that we are dealing with. So I'm going to show you this and I'm going to go over the fundamentals of the way it works so you can understand it that way. So we're going to do click with a capital C. And then we're going to pass in a function. So we haven't got one yet, but I'm going to just build a function right up here called test. We'll come back to it later. And we're going to just say data pass for now we're going to paste in that and just so you know the pass just means we're going to do nothing and just return basically and that's all it's going to do so we are basically what we're linking to and this c actually should be lowercase that's my bad but uh clicked is going to say whenever the button is clicked on we want the event the clicked event to connect and run this function so up here we have a function called test, as I've already talked about. And whatever we do in here is going to run when we have a button click. So I'm going to put in here a print statement. You clicked the thing. You clicked the thing, see? So now that we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run back and I'm going to run it here to show you that it works. So click me, and there you go. You can see it says you clicked the thing. And it doesn't matter how many times I click this. We're going to just keep firing that event over and over, and you can see my terminal fills. So what I'm going to do now is kind of explain to you the fundamentals. So GTK and really any GUI toolkit, the fundamentals is pretty much going to come down to this. You have events, you have widgets, and you can have functions and methods to control things around all of that. So let's start off with our widgets. Widgets are the thing the user actually looks at. So if I have a button widget, then I have the ability with that widget to put a button on the user screen wherever I place that widget, and then they can click on it. And I can do whatever I want, like we've talked about with events just a moment ago once they click that button. So we have that. Now, all widgets deal with events. They immunate, they, 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 output events, okay, they initiate events or output events, then also in addition to that, to outputting events, some widgets can take an event, um, which we'll talk about in a later video as well, probably. 
Uh, that would be more of an advanced topic from what I understand. So we won't, we won't touch on that today. But anyway, continuing on with what we will talk about. So we have events. And events, again, is something that is going to be triggered generally by a widget. So I have, let's say my button widget, I have the user click that button. We're going to have a clicked event be initiated. And then what's going to happen is we are going to have an event handler, that's our test function in our case, that is going to handle that event for us. And that's going to then run whatever we need it to do. Like we've talked about before, a function can be thought of as like a baby program. And so that is going to be what happens with that. So when it comes to widgets, there's a bunch of them. Uh, in GTK, for example, we have buttons. We have the ability to have all these organization types, if you will, these all these different ways to organize our GUI. So for example, we have a grid, a GTK grid, and that's where we take the window and we can divide it into columns and uh, rows. And this is something I used to do most of my GUIs because I prefer that style of working, but for simpler things, you may not want that. Um, but it allows you to control placement. So today we are going to use a little bit of GTK grid. And so this will remind you of graphing things out back in a math class. It's very fundamentally similar. And we can use that. And so we'll, we'll go ahead and place that widget in the root of the window. And so what that means is, remember I was doing win.add before? Well, we can only put one widget at the very highest level of the window. And then, so a widget like a grid is actually going to let us put multiple widgets inside of it. Those are layout managers, and they allow us to lay out our graphical user interface in a way that the user can have buttons and things, and we can place things where we want the user to see them, right? We want the text box to be here, let's say, then below it we want a submit button, okay? And above that text box we want a label that just says your name or name. And so today what I'm gonna show you is a really fundamentally simple way to do this. Really what we're going to do is we're going to just build a really simple GUI that asks the user for their name. When they hit submit, we're just gonna print it in the terminal. It's very simple. So let's get right on into it and hopefully this will all make sense to you. So <clears throat> let's ask for the user's name. How are we going to do that? Well, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to make a label called LBL. We're going to call it GTK or create it from gtk.label. And then we're going to go label equals, this is an argument to that uh, label call here, and I'm going to just call it name, uppercase, colon. So the word name, uppercase, colon. Uppercase name with the N being capital and then colon is what I'm trying to get to there. Can't talk today. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that, but now, right now, we still just have our button in the window. So if I run that window again, here's what we're gonna see. The exact same GUI that we've seen before. We have a button and that's all we have. So let's talk about how we can change that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a grid now. And I'm gonna just create it up here. I'm just gonna call it grid. That's my variable name. And I'm going to just go create it from gtk.grid. Again, we're going to just simply create it from our grid function here. So we don't need anything in this. So we have a grid now. So I'm going to just come down here and change the grid to being what's in here. And if I run the window now, here's what's going to happen. We're going to get a blank window because what do you notice? We do not have at this point anything in that grid. We've got the grid in the window, but the grid itself doesn't look like anything. It's just a way to organize things. So let's go ahead and I'm going to now add, come down here below my label, because again, we run from top to bottom. And I'm just going to organize this a little bit over it. We're going to do a grid dot attach. And I'm going to do a zero comma zero comma one comma one. Now I'm going to space this out like this because I think it looks better. You don't actually have to do that though. Okay. Do one last comma and we're going to put our variable of the object that we want. So in this case we've got a label object that we've created. 
a GK, a GTK label, and we're going to place that inside of our grid, and we're going to do it on row and column zero zero, which is the first one of each. Programmers, we start from zero when it comes to counting, and we're going to say that this spans one row and one column. So it basically just sets right where we put it. We could actually have it take up multiple around it if we wanted to. That can come in handy in a later situation. We won't talk about that today because it's more advanced. Now I'm going to go ahead and do another space here. We're going to do a grid attach again, and I'm going to just put my button here. And then, like I said, we're going to just change it. So I'm going to put my button neighboring my text. And, oh, I apologize. This is my bad. It actually is the other way around. So we will put our object, and then we'll put its coordinates on the grid. So, sorry about that. It's been a little while since I've dealt with this. My apologies, but let's go ahead and run it again. And as you can see, it worked. We have got, if you pay real close attention to the GUI here and I bring it in, name colon button. And again, the button still does what it's supposed to do. Now, is it the prettiest GUI in the world? Not exactly, but it is there. So, but we don't really want a button that says click me there. What we want, and so I'm now going to change it, is we would like, I'm gonna move my button down here, and what we would like now is name, and I'm just going to go underscore input in my case, GTK underscore text, or not, now I'm gonna do, what is it? Let me go back and look at the widgets here. So it's an entry widget that I want. And so I'm going to just do a entry widget. So gtk.entry like this. We don't need a label, so we're gonna get rid of that. And we've created an entry. Next, I'm going to place it here. Now, lastly, I'm going to place my button as well. Now I want my button be on the second row and the first column. So I'm going to change this to a zero and this to a one to make that happen. And now if we run our GUI again, here's what's gonna happen. We're going to get this. This is our GUI now. As you can see, we have click me, still works, and we have name and we have our text box. I can type in this random stuff and it works. Again, we can still close the window. Nothing has changed on that front. So, now that we have got that far, I want to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about something else, okay? What is that something else? I want to talk about actually being able to go ahead and use the information that we have created. Now, to do this easily, what we are going to do for the sake of right now is we are going to make input the, the name input, we're going to come in here. I'm going to go under this function and go global space name input. And what this is, this is a new topic for us. This is a global variable now, meaning we can actually see it inside this function. Normally, we would not be able to do that. And now, watch this. Instead of you, we can do this. Name input, comma, and then here we go. And I'm going to go get, what is it? I got to double check. I think it's get underscore text. Anywhere where it's actually, we're getting the text. So I'm going to go get text because I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But if not, we can always check the documentation later. We're going to run our program. And let's see if we get any errors. If I type in test and hit click me. And it, we did not. We got test clicked the thing. And so just like that, we were able to actually take what the user give us for their name and we're going to have clicked the thing. So we just made a sentence that is changing based on what their name is. Now, I removed this excess space here because this comma in our print statement, because you can do this, will add a space automatically for us. So it's an easy way for us to print that out. So now if I run it again, you'll see test clicked the thing. And if I change this, test to click the thing will come up when I hit click me again. So this comes back to our events. Like I said, we have set here using connect our button when the event clicked. Is it emitted? We're going to run test, okay, up here, where you're going to set this as global. We're going to grab the text from the name input at this time and print out 
they they clicked the thing, right? Now, again, this destroy event, just to give you an idea about this a little bit, because this is another event, you're going to want this, because if I don't have this event, I'm just going to show you what happens. If I run the GUI again, and I click the X button, you'll notice that my terminal didn't return to a prompt, and that means the program is still running. If I hit Control-C to close it manually, you can see that it definitely was not happy about that. Why is that? Because... We admitted the event destroy when we clicked on the X, but you know what happened is we weren't actually listening for that to go anywhere. But if we turn that back on, now our event handler is gtk underscore or dot main underscore quit. And that right there means we're just going to close our GUI. Now, after that, we have this show all. That means we're going to show all of our widgets and specifically the window itself, which is also a widget. We're going to then run our main loop that is going to go over and over again where all of our GUI happens. So to give you an idea, in all the major GUI toolkits, there is an event loop where over and over again, the GUI is constantly looking for an event to happen. So if I click a button, that loop is waiting for me to do something like that or to type into a field and it's going to update things. It's going to change variables in the back. It is going to run event handlers, et cetera, et cetera, depending on exactly what's happening. And it's going to allow us as the user to control what the program is doing, regardless of whether or not we do it in the order the programmer might have wanted us to. So for example, with a command line where we're asking people with those input statements, as we did in the previous video, what happened with those is we have to ask the question and then it gets answered in that order every time. But the user doesn't have to do that. So if we had like a name and a phone number field, they could put the phone number in first and then put in the name, even if that the phone number is the top listing and the name is the bottom. I prefer to do it the other way, but you get what I'm saying. All right, folks. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I really appreciate your viewership, everybody. And we will probably have one or two more videos coming up in this series later on. Let me know in the comments if any of this was confusing to you. I can try to clarify things in the comments for you. I'm happy to try and help you. Again, this is really aimed at beginners, people that are not exactly experts in software development and building Linux apps. Uh, we'll probably do a video on packaging at some point and getting your app into a build that the average user could use on Linux when they don't have Python installed and all this by hand and they, they know what they need and all that. Just make it easy for someone that is the average user to be able to use it. So we'll probably talk about that in our next video. I'm uh, not sure exactly when that will be, but you just stay tuned to the channel and we'll, you know, be posting that at some point. Everybody, again, I thank you so much for watching Open Source tonight. The audience is getting bigger, and I really appreciate that. And anyway, everybody, until next time, thank you for watching, and goodbye. And action.